What's up guys? Today we're taking a look at Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Deluxe Laser Bag. This is a deluxe size figure and you guys already know probably how I feel about Beast Hunter figures. If you've watched my review of Wheeljack, Bumblebee, and Soundwave, I don't dig the bright colors. I don't dig the cheaper plastic than what we got with R.I.D. series, but what are you going to do? Anyways, onto his packaging. You've got a nice picture of Predaking up there. It says Transformers Prime Beast Hunters. Picture of him in his beast mode. Includes Toxic Strike Blaster. You can watch them on TV, on the hub, or at hubworld.com whenever the series is released. His name is Laserback. He's a Predacon. Come over here, and you got his tech specs. A picture of him down here. He's the third figure of this series. And the pictures aren't, like, from the show. It's not, like, a nice piece of artwork. It's just the figure close up. But anyways, flip over the back here. You see his dragon mode. You see his robot mode. Now, when I first saw the robot mode here, it kind of reminded me of the Transmetal 2 Beast Wars Megatron. And the only color I really don't dig is the bright yellow. But anyways, we still have a picture of the original Prime series on here. And what I mean by that is, they haven't changed at all in this picture. So who knows if Bumblebee or Wheeljack or Optimus are even going to change into the molds that we're getting here in the toy line. But again, a very, very short bio. It says, Chaotic Predacon Rebel, whose only goal is to scour Earth clean of the Autobots. Toxic Strike Blaster included, firing two missiles, tail becomes whip. Without further ado, guys, I really hope I'm not disappointed by this Beast Hunters figure again. But let's open up Laserback and see what he's all about. Now with Beast Hunters Deluxe Laserback out of his packaging, before we really get onto him, I just want to go over these directions. I really haven't been covering these with Bumblebee, Wheeljack, and Soundwave, but... You see on here, there's a whole new kind of direction sheet here. It says, uh, Tales of the Beast Hunters, Chapter 3. And it's continued from Chapter 2, Deluxe Soundwave. I, I showed it off a little bit in Soundwave's review. I don't think I showed it at all in Bumblebees or Wheeljacks. But as you can see here, uh, you see new kind of artwork here. It's kind of shiny. There you go. Come down here, it says this Toxic Strike Blaster. And it shows his gun. It says it disintegrates and destroys most armor. Double blast can melt massive targets in seconds. And acidic fumes can cause unprotected circuits to short out. That's kind of something new they're doing for kids, I suppose. And down here is where the bio really continues for each figure. I guess that's why the bios are really so short on the back of the packaging. But really a nice new layout here of all the directions. And the directions are actually very, very nice. Very accurate. Um quite pleased with them and each of them come in some kind of new color but right over here on his bio real quick it says even as he floated helpless in the darkness of the hyper evolution chamber laserback could hear what happened around him he heard much of what shockwave said in his strange voice and he knew before he emerged what his plan would be now freed from the chamber he is no longer interested in what the decepticon scientist who cloned him has to say laserback refuses to serve under anyone not an overlord like megatron or a conqueror like predaking instead he is determined to see chaos reign stealing a tracking device from the lab he blasts off hoping to see chaos made king by the destruction of two tyrants who stand in his way continued in chapter four deluxe wheeljack sold separately so i might do a short little review of the read-up for uh, bumblebee wheeljack and Soundwave, I'm not too sure yet, but it's a little story that goes along to show you, to kind of give you an idea of what's going to be happening. Now with Laserback here, there's uh, a lot of interesting things about him. There's some downfalls, but it's really the first thing we're getting from the Beast Hunter Line series that's new. You know, Bumblebee, Wheeljack, and Soundwave were all kind of remolds and repaints and such with some new weapons. This is the first brand new mold we're actually getting from the Beast Hunter series. And not only that, it's the first Predacon. And with that being said, this guy actually really looks good. Now, he does have visible hand syndrome. So, that's going to be something that people are really going to complain about. And a lot of people really aren't big on the whole Beast type of Transformers coming back. After the kind of crappy toy line with the Beast Wars and Beast Machines series. Though there were some decent figures. Now, me personally, I liked Beast Wars growing up. That was actually a really fun and interesting series. But for these guys, it appears they're going along with a whole kind of dragon mode. To where is that's what this is supposed to be. This is his dragon mode. The same thing with Predaking and the new Ripclaw figure. Now as far as the color accuracy, obviously we haven't seen them in the show, so we're not going to know what that's going to be all about. But I could probably guess that this is not what he's going to look like in the show. Maybe mold wise, but the, the coloring, I really can't see that. And the yellow up here is the only real color that 
bugs me. Everything else is actually tolerable. I don't mind the purple on here because it's not such a vibrant purple. But Hasbro has been really giving us these kind of skittled color transformers recently. We got it with Retail Bruticus. We got it with Soundwave. We got it with Bumblebee. Wheeljack wasn't too bad. But then again here, the bright yellow on Laserback. Now he's got purple head, purple feet, red across the entire body, really bright yellow. He's got green here and green in his eyes. And that's pretty much it. As far as the posability goes for this guy, uh, I mean, he can rotate here 360 degrees. He does have a swivel here, right at the elbow joint, and he can bend at the elbow joint. And there's ball joints down here, but they're not on the bottom. They're on the side. So you can go all the way up like that, and you can go down a fair amount as well. So that's really nice. Back here on the legs, I mean, you get all kinds of posability, which I'll get into when we do robot mode. As far as the tail goes, you're not going to get motion out of it because of the gun back here, which we'll get to in a second. But it's this soft kind of rubber, and that's not throughout the whole tail because this detaches to become his whip, uh, his weapon, so to speak. The ears back here can kind of rotate forwards and back a little bit, and you get a little motion out of the jaw here. He's got a full row of teeth on the bottom, but he's only got two teeth on the top. Now, when you come over here, let's see if you can see this. These two tabs here where the uh, head is supposed to really connect with the ears, there's two little slots in here, and it's supposed to really tab in there and kind of make this line up right here in this crevice. And you can push it in, but it really doesn't stay in all too well. And when you do that, it kind of keeps them looking down. But if you go under the tabs, you can kind of give a little bit more of an edge to his face and help him look straight a little bit more. But those tabs there really just don't want to stay tabbed. So that in. kind of sucks. You can't get him to really look up all too well. Though when he's crouched like this, he does look like he's looking forward. He don't really look like he's looking straight down too much, but it is a minor nitpick. And there's no rotation in the beast mode head. Now coming up here on the back, you can lift this up and arc that like so. Henceforth giving the name laser back. And up here you can split this open. And these are a very, very soft rubber, very flimsy. It kind of reminds me of the same material of first edition Prime Sword almost. But you can open those up, do that. There's a little button up here, and fire as usual. And remember how the center of the packaging uh, includes two firing missiles? Uh, they kind of cheap down on you. You got one missile with two points on the end to kind of make it look like two missiles. Again, no big deal. Minor, minor nitpick. And you just, can just close it back up like so. And you got two tabs here, two tab holes. You just close it up, and that's that. And now we have laser back in his little laser back mode, and this does detach. And you can simply just put that back in. And there's one kind of cool thing here there's an engrovement in his tail. And with that, now you can angle this down and push this in. And now that long part of the missile will now lie in his tail. And you continue the whole dragon kind of look here with the spikes on his back all the way throughout his tail. But now just for some size comparisons, there's Laserback and then there's Beast Hunter's Deluxe Wheeljack. And as you can see here, for his Beast Mode, I mean, he's a good size for Deluxe. I mean, he really looks huge compared to these vehicle modes. I mean, I like that a lot, how big the Beast Mode here looks to the vehicle modes. And then again, here's the yellow I was talking about. It's like they just wanted to pretty much use it up, all this bright yellow. And that was one of the things I really didn't like about Soundwave so much, other than the fact that it doesn't stay together all too well. Now besides that, there's just one other thing I wanted to show you guys, and that is an unopened Deluxe Laserback. Now, as you can see in the packaging, he's completely mistransformed. Sorry about that, guys. But yeah, he's completely mistransformed the packaging. And even down here, I don't know if you guys can see this, uh, you actually probably can't, but they have his actual hand, the robot mode hand flipped out, and then the beast mode hand out. And it's kind of standing straight up. They kind of did a hybrid of the robot mode and the beast mode, or dragon mode, I should say. And another thing is with these Beast Hunter figures is they're kind of all different. Now hopefully you guys can see this, but right up here in mine, there's a little splash of yellow here and some silver paint kind of going across here. Very light, almost looks like it's scratched. As to where on this one, there's just an abundance of yellow kind of going across the purple part of the gun here. And that missile on his back fires really, really well. See, I, I didn't even touch the button, but it, it fires very nice. So, I mean, other than that, let's get on to his transformation. I, I like to personally leave the gun back there for now, but what you're gonna do is come over here and you can unpeg the part of the tail 
you can lift this section up just a little bit come over here just pretty much pull these legs out because they're all just accordioned in and again <laughs> firing that missile once you do that you can open up the chest here you can put the head down that'll kind of just slot in there very nicely and you can close this up and there are kind of tabs in here that will just very gently lock in now once you've done that you come up here and the tail will go right into a little hole right there so you put that up and now that the tails up you can come under here and push these legs together and those will tab in very nicely and you can work on these legs I like to get them as straight as possible I mean <laughs> it's not really straight but pull them out as far as you can to really give them uh, as much height as possible I should have said so once you do that you can bring the arms down just pretty much flip the hands out like so rotate the fist forward same thing over here straighten this all out then once you do that you can come up here and there's actually little slots in here for these dragon mode ears to uh, slot in you can see that slot that one down well face his head forward and that's an issue I'll get to in a minute but other than that you really have laser back pretty much in his robot mode now as you guys are seeing here being that his name is laser back you can continue to use the gimmick in the robot mode because it's in the same peg hole up there and the part of the tail will hold it up and still allow you to have that up there and you can open these up as you like again you're gonna have this really long part of the missile sticking out there so that's kind of annoying but he looks good I, I dig the look of both modes of this guy he just looks really tough and you come over here and you could flip these up if you like um, I don't know why you'd want to do that but they are manageable to have you like I like to just keep them down as they're originally packaged and again all the same posability he can rotate 360 degrees here at the arm and then at a swivel here he can rotate 360 degrees I'm sorry that's incorrect over here he would be able to rotate 360 degrees on this swivel but that part of his elbow is going to get caught on his chest so that's probably going to account for the beast mode as well so I do apologize for that over here at the elbow he can bend forward at the wrist it's on a swivel that can rotate 360 degrees and that goes for both arms no waist articulation and before we get onto the legs this is the issue I had with the beast mode hands not only are they sticking back here and kind of showing but because that ball joint is on the side instead of on the bottom here in the actual foot you can't rotate this at all to kind of hide all these beast mode claws here up by the elbow so now you're stuck with them sticking out like so not really bother me as much as I thought it would now that he's in hand but definitely something that I think is gonna annoy some fans now down here in his legs again no waist articulation at all he's on a ball joint it can go forwards and back he can bend here at the knee he swivels at the knee but his whole knee joint gets in the way so you can't go 360 with it coming down here this can go up a little bit this little joint here and you got another little joint right here which can help him lay those two together instead of just like that and then he's on a ball joint here at the foot which can rotate 360 degrees and has very nice posability now with other than that guys you don't have to remove this gun off of him but it's kind of just annoying me the head here is my one kind of huge nitpick about the robot mode other than other obviously the bright yellow that I've already mentioned but up here when his head is facing forward the ball joint feels pretty tight but when it goes any other direction or even backwards I mean it's really really loose and flimsy so I might pull that off and stick some scotch tape in there to kind of tighten the joint up but other than that he really has great possibility and really he just suffers from those hands showing again visible hand syndrome in the robot mode as well and he's kind of got these chicken legs going as well as the back view isn't too terrible but it could be better now with the tail here if you didn't want to put it in his hand you can pop this in why isn't it popping in there we go like that and it kind of just looks like a ponytail now which is kind of weird but that is one way you could store it now with that up there you're not going to be able to store the actual gun anywhere now so that kind of sucks and that won't go in there unless you put it the original no, way no it's not even going to go that way either because of this whole piece here 
So you could put this like that. No, actually you can't do that either because the piece of plastic right here is forcing the gun out. So it's one or the other, guys. That's, or you just have neither of them on, which is what I tend to do sometimes. Now, for those of you that were Beast Wars fans, I think it was Bolt Matrix that said he has a very Cheetor-esque kind of transformation, which he does, which pretty much you just folded up the legs, you fixed the arms a little bit, and the Beast Mode head went into the chest, which is how a usual transformation went for a Cheetor type of figure. As far as a head going to the chest, a lot of figures kind of just did that in the whole Beast Wars series. And he's absolutely right about that. It is very Cheetor-like. So if you enjoyed that type of figure, I really don't see anything wrong with this one as well. And like I said before, all the joints on here are very nice Not and like tight. the other figures that I had picked up where those joints were just all over the place. He has just got great posability. He's tough looking, a very nice figure. Again, all I can really complain about is how these claws are sticking out here. Uh, the loose kind of ball joint there, which is easily fixable, and really the bright yellow. Other than that, oh, and the <laughs> obvious dragon mode head not really staying into those tabs. There. Now, before we get into comparisons, there's his accessories again. And it's your choice whether you want to have this open or not, but if you fire this and get that out of there, you could put this in his hand and keep it like that. Now, if you have the missile in there, you're not going to be able to have that type of posability because it's one not going to stay in there because the damn missile's too long. So you're going to have to turn it sideways. And have it looking kind of weird like and that. And with his whip here, it's kind of grooved to only really work for this hand. I mean, if you really force it and work on it, it could fit in his right hand, I suppose. But I really had a lot of trouble with it, and it kind of just fits so much better in his right hand. So let me just come over here. And I'll just slot that in there. And then we have Laserback now with his weapons attached, which doesn't look too terrible. Like I said in the package reviewing, he kind of reminds me of the Transmittals 2 Beast Wars Megatron. Or even the original Beast Wars Megatron, to where he kind of had a tail here as a hand. Um, he had a dino head for uh, his right arm, or the uh, dragon mode head, but still looks very nice with the gun here. Now like I said, the missile fires very well, so... Be careful with that because it does come loose quite often. As far as this being a tail whip, um, I guess. But if you're going to cover up his hands to kind of make it look like it transformed into it in a sense, it's kind of weird having the whole other hand under it now. So really the weapons I don't really think work too well. And again, fired at me. <laughs> so as you can see, the weapons really don't look too great on him. And these little pegs here that go into his hand, it don't go straight down. The way the hand is grooved, you can see the thumb here and his finger, and then you see another piece of plastic in there that when you push this in, it makes it go sideways, which is really weird. I don't know why that's like that. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And other people have left the Dragon Mode ears up. Uh, I don't know why you would do that. It's user preference, but you can obviously see there are slots back here to keep that down So there. getting his weapons off him, because I think they just really look ridiculous in his hands. If anything, I prefer the gun on his back to go with the name gimmick. But we'll take a laser back here and we'll compare him to the Deluxe Beast Hunters Bumblebee, which if you have the RID Bumblebee, it's the same height, it's all the same kind of engineering, just remolded. So it's really all pretty much the same size. As you can see with laser back here, he's really not too tall of a figure. He's almost equivalent in height Actually, he might just be equivalent in height with Bumblebee here. Uh, obviously, there's parts all over Bumblebee here that just stick out. But from head to head here, you really see that Laserback is kind of just about the same size as Bumblebee, just bulkier. And if you don't have an R.I.D. Bumblebee or a Deluxe Beast Hunters Bumblebee, here is MP12 Masterpiece Sideswipe. Now let's put Laserback back into his Beast Mode, or Dragon Mode as they call it now, regardless. What you're going to want to do is just come over here. Put the palms up, flip it inward, and they will clip in. There's actually a little thing in there for them to hold on to. So, palms facing you, just pretty much pull out the beast feet, and you can hear them snap in. Come over here, straighten out his face, lift the dragon ears up, open up his chest, and it'll open up pretty wide as well. You just come in here, and you can... Fold that up in there, close this up, flip down the legs, 
come back here and you just pretty much fold this all into your liking. Uh, you're going to have to also separate here at the crotch. Little yellow tabs in there. Come over here, do the same thing. Just fold it all up together. Rotate it down on that ball joint. You can bring the tail down. And you can pretty much push that in. And once you do that, you can take his tail and peg that right back in there. Which actually worked pretty easily. Usually it's kind of tough to do. And it hurts your hands because you got these little spikes here that are, are sticking out right up there. And lastly, just take his gun. And you're going to have to slide it in by the missile first to slide into the tail. I would put your finger on this. That way the missile really doesn't fire on you. Like it just did on me. And you could push this in. I don't know why it's not working. There we go. Push that in. Push the missile in. And you can really just adjust this all to your liking. Now I gotta tell you guys, overall, I really enjoyed Laser back here. All his joints are nice and tight. He's got a great looking beast mode here. He's got Predacon symbols on the side here. He's got excellent posability. He has some minor nitpicks that kind of bugged me a little bit, but I can look past them. Uh, again, visible hand syndrome, really bright colors. I don't really dig the yellow too much, and it doesn't really tab too well here on the head. As well as, you're really not going to get any real posability out of this. He kind of just looks like he's looking down the whole time. But other than those minor things that I mentioned here, as well as in the robot mode, with the looseness of the robot mode head and such, he's really a great figure. A lot of people have been turned off by all the bright colors here, because we did see photos of actually a Ripclaw figure that looked pretty decent. And then they finalized and repainted it, and now it's really looking turquoise and bright colored, just like Laserback here. But beyond the coloring here, the figure itself is pretty nice, and I do actually recommend picking him up. I picked him up at my Toys R Us about a couple days ago, and I was very questionable about it because after picking up B, Wheeljack, and Soundwave, I didn't have any high expectations. So overall, yes, I do recommend picking up Transverse Prime Beast Hunters Deluxe Laserback. But once again, guys, stay tuned for more giveaways, stay tuned for more reviews of your favorite Transformers, and once again, this is Mr. TF Prime, and I want to thank you for watching.